Hello, everybody. So um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about retirement accounts. Um, but before we do that, I want to wish you a happy Memorial Day weekend. And I'm going to keep it brief because I know everybody is trying to go out and get some barbecue, including me. Okay. So let's turn up. But first, let's get out and get our learn on. Hey, loved ones. Hey, Sheena. Hey, Nutta. All right. So um, if you have pencil and paper, it would be good. You know, this is the visual that was posted to the group and that I will be referencing during this live stream. So we'll just get going with um, IRAs. An IRA is an individual retirement agreement, okay? It's an agreement with the IRS. It's also known as an individual retirement account, but what it is, it's a way to save money without paying the taxes on the money that you are saving, okay? And while it's growing, all of the growth and earnings and dividends that you're paid will not be taxed. So people like to use this as a way to save for retirement because they, they, ha they end up with a bigger account value than they would if they had to pay taxes, okay, on the money while it's growing. One thing to know about IRAs is that there are limits to how much you can put in. You can put in, now this year, it's $6,000 a year. You can put in $6,000 every year. And that makes your taxable income lower. So let's say you make $100,000 every year. And you put in $6,000 into your IRA. That means that you only have to pay taxes on the rest of your income, the 94,000. You've reduced your income by $6,000 by putting some of it away into that IRA. So you pay taxes on a lower amount. Now the amount that's growing in the IRA or the amount that's in the IRA is not taxed until you start taking the money out, okay? Got it. Um, which is better, a Roth IRA, a Roth or a tra traditional IRA? Good question. Now, I cannot tell you what's better for you. You have to decide. And if you need help, um, let me know, like inbox me. And if you want to sit down with somebody in your state, a financial advisor in your state, let me know and I'll link you to, at least you can talk because you really need to get a financial plan in order to know which one of these is going to be right for you? There are many factors. And I'm only going to go over the, I'm just going to gloss over these accounts. So there's more information to be discussed within these accounts, okay? This is just, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So it's best to sit down with a person. So yes, Nkosi, that $6,000 that you put into your IRA this year, it grows, if you're investing, hopefully it grows, that is taxed later when you reach retirement. Um, someone asked about Roth IRAs. Now, a regular traditional IRA, you put money in it, you don't pay taxes on that money right away, okay? It's tax, your contributions are tax deductible. You can save it. Now, a Roth IRA is similar. It grows tax deferred. So you don't have to pay any taxes on the activity inside of the account, but when you start taking money for retirement, you do not have to pay taxes on the money at that time. Now I'm going to talk briefly about a SEP IRA. A SEP IRA is for business owners. That is a way for the business's taxes to be reduced. You can put up to $56,000 each year or up to 25% of earnings, okay? And that way you can save for retirement as a business owner, okay? Another type of IRA for business owners and employers is a simple IRA. It allows employees to contribute 
and also for the employer to contribute. So a simple IRA allows both employees and the employer to contribute. Only up to $13,000 though for a simple IRA. Um, and I think, I think it's the same for the year 2019. For the year 2019, because they change the limits each um, year. So for, for, from what I can remember, the simple IRA, an employee can put up to $13,000. An employer can put up to 3% of what an employee earns. So um, I'm going to just skip on down to 401k and profit sharing. Most people are familiar with the 401k because you have it at work. Who has a 401k at work? 401k, 403b, they're very similar. A 401k is a type of account that allows you, the employee, to put in money. It also allows your overall income to be reduced. Uh, a traditional 401k, just like an IRA, the contributions reduce your total income. So you pay less taxes on what you are earning right now. It also allows you to grow that money tax deferred, meaning you don't pay taxes on the activity inside your account. The investments as they grow, as dividends are paid, as you know, as uh, stocks and bonds are sold by mutual fund companies, you don't have to pay any taxes on that, okay? So it's growing tax deferred, but when you start taking money out at retirement, you have to pay taxes then. Also, if you take money out before you reach age 59 and a half, you will have to pay a 10% IRS penalty. No one likes that penalty. So I left off at 401k. A 403b is pretty much the same as a 401k. Pretty much almost exactly the same. The difference is 401ks are sponsored by privately owned companies. 403bs are sponsored by governments, um, universities, hospitals, like nonprofit organizations have a 403b. And there are a few special IRS rules between the two, but it's very, very much in the weeds. Just know that they are very similar. 403B and a 401K are very similar. Now, 457 is also similar. For all of these plans, you can put up to $19,000 in each year. If you're over 50, you can put in more. But for these three, you can put up to $19,000 in each year and reduce your income by $19,000. Remember I talked, if, we, if you make $100,000 and you put in uh, the max out these retirement accounts, you put in $19,000 a year, you max it out, that reduces your taxable income by $19,000. So that's one reason some people might do it. That way, you only have to pay taxes on $81,000. In some instances, it reduces your tax bracket. If you're on the edge of the tax bracket, which I'm not looking at the tax brackets right now. I don't know if no one by heart anymore. What I'm trying to say is that contributing to a tax qualified plan can reduce your taxable income and take you to a lower tax bracket. In some instances, it will result in you taking home more money because you don't have to pay as much in taxes. For example, if you earn $40,000 a year, your tax rate is 22%. If you contribute a mere $600 into a tax qualified plan like an IRA or a 401k, your income will be reduced to $39,400. That changes your tax rate to 12%. This means that you will pay 10% less in taxes and get to keep even more of your money because you save for retirement. This is a win-win. So the 457 allows you to put in $19,000. Now what's different between this and the 401k and 403b is that when you, when you separate from your employer, 
you stop working for them, you can take the money out of a 457B and you don't have to pay that IRS penalty. Now, 457s are typically only available to government employees and special um, nonprofit employees, much like a 403B. Um, so just something to be aware of, okay? So for these types of accounts, you can put up to $19,000 each, each year. For simple IRA, as an employee, you can put up to $13,000 a year. A set IRA, you can put up to $56,000 a year if you're a business owner. And then an IRA, $6,000 a year. Now, um, so we talked a bit about the Roth IRA, the difference between the Roth IRA and the traditional IRA. The Roth 401k is basically the same. The Roth 403b and Roth 457, they do pretty much the same exact thing. You pay taxes now, which is different from these accounts because you pay taxes later for these. You pay taxes now, okay? It grows tax deferred. And then when you take money out of these accounts, these Roth accounts, it's tax free. Anyway, I'm about to wrap this up. I've been talking for a long time, but um, these are also types of investments accounts. I'll talk a little bit about the education accounts. So 529, Coverdale earnings, uh, well, education savings account, and the health savings account. People don't really use Coverdale as much as they do the 529s. Actually, in health savings is not education, I'm sorry. Did not mean to have that circle. Um, okay, so we've got the education accounts and then the non-qualified annuities. I love annuities. Annuities get a bad rap. So a non-qualified annuity, you put in money that's already been taxed. It grows tax deferred. And then when you take money out, you have to pay taxes on it. The thing about an annuity is that... Um, it doesn't have the same contribution limits. You can put a million dollars in an annuity or you can put whatever amount you want in an annuity. There are other types of retirement accounts and also other types of investment accounts. These are just a few of the most common. We will discuss more in the Wealth Watchers Facebook group. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe for regular updates.